Hello and welcome to video two of the timeline series. In this video we're going to take a closer look at the timeline itself and how you can manipulate the timeline and add more information directly into it. I'm also going to show you how to add chapters and scenes from within the timeline. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so we're back in the uh, project that I created earlier. I've renamed it to Timeline 2 and I've beefed it out with chapters, uh, characters, scenes and events. And as you can see, the, the uh, timeline is now nice and full. There's plenty of details in all the entries and you can see that all the entries, are, uh, all the timeline entries are really close together. But if you notice here, it goes from Sunday the 6th to the 15th. So it's sort of the time in between those two dates is cut out. So I'm going to show you how to do this so that everything's nice and close together and you see lots of details in your entries. Okay, so I'm going to pause and I'm going to set everything back to uh, default. Okay, so basically I've uh, removed all of... Uh, the settings that I put onto the timeline and I've turned everything off. So one by one, I'm going to work through these icons. So if I click chapters, obviously chapters appears in its chapters thread. Scenes, scenes appear in their scenes threads. Events and events appear in their threads. Now, ghost chapters refers to something I talked to in the Navigator video. So if you want to find out what ghosting is, uh, refer to that video. Now you can zoom in and out using this uh, drag and drop bar. So if I grip hold of it like that and I squeeze it down, the entries get bigger. Okay. You can also do that by holding down control and using your mouse wheel to scroll in or out, to zoom in or out. Now what I'm going to do if you notice before, in in my um, the timeline a few moments ago, these gaps were really close together. So what you can do, you can warp time. And what that means is I can shrink the distance between these two entries without doing anything to the timeline. And you do that with time warp. So if I do t turn on time warp and then select the area that I want to warp, which is the area between those entries, then I hold down the Alt key and use my mouse, uh, my mouse scroll wheel again, I can remove the area of time in between those entries. And I can do that for all of these areas. So if I turn on Time Warp again, and I select in between these, these two entries, hold down Alt and use my mouse wheel again, I can remove the unused period of time between those entries. Okay, so I've just gone through and I've warped all the times through all the entries so that everything's now grouped nicely together. So what I'm going to do now is turn on characters, which places the characters into all of the entries. And if you hover over any of them, it will tell you the person's full names rather than just their initials. If I turn on date and times, it also adds the date and times in. I'm going to zoom in a bit more just so you can see that. Okay, so now the, the timeline is back to how I had it when we started this video. Okay, so at this point I think it's best we go to dual screen. So that as I'm working on the timeline and adding uh, chapters, scenes and events, you see them instantly appear in uh, the navigator in the main document. Now, again, what I'm showing you is just the way I work. There are lots of different ways of doing this, but what I want to do is try and demonstrate the flexibility of the timeline. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so to work in dual screen or multi-monitor uh, mode, you can simply drag any tab off onto another monitor. And generally the way I work is I have um, the organizer, I have three monitors. I have timeline open on one. The middle one here, I have my main document 
and timeline on another. Did I just say that in the right order? <laughs> I think I did. Um, anyway, so what I want to do now is show how you can create a new chapter uh, from within the timeline and it appears in your working document. So you want to make sure your last chapter is selected. If you don't do that, let's say I selected this one, when I press new chapter, it would place um, my chapter after that one. So I've selected the last chapter in the timeline. I'm going to go new chapter. I'll call it chapter 14 and I hit enter and you see it immediately appear in the document. I'm going to set that to standard book. Okay, now what I can do, I can also, I'm now going to edit uh, the time of that. So I'm going to say since previous chapter and I'm going to go plus 10 hours. So what that's done, that's created precisely from the end of the last chapter, a 10 hour chapter. And you can see it's automatically colored it because it's in, it's all I assigned to main. What I can then do, I'll close that. If I highlight that chapter, I can go new scene and I go scene one just for ease. I hit enter and you can see the scene. Again, I can edit that time. I want it into the scenes thread uh, and what I'm going to go is from the beginning of the chapter plus two hours close and you can see it's created the scene in the chapter and the entry in the navigator and colored it again I'm going to highlight that scene and I'm going to go new event and I'll just call it event and again, I can edit that event. So I'll go since the chapter started plus uh, 20 minutes. And I will assign it to the threads and I will protect it and make it a key event. So straight away, you can see it appear in the main document in the navigator, fully color coded with the threads and everything else. So like with all elements of Papyrus, you can create scenes, chapters, events from multiple areas, not just the navigator, but from within the document, within the timeline, and within the organizer, which I'll talk about in another video. So it's very versatile, okay? Okay, so that was video two of the timeline series. Now, okay, the timeline probably is one of the more complicated elements of Papyrus, but the more you use it, the easier you'll find it to use. I use it all the time. For me, it's the backbone of how I create my books. I, I, I love the way I can pace my books out, refer back to the timeline, and keep checking that I'm hitting all my marks and all my targets. So until next time, see you later.